uh, I'd like to um, introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Chanka Disanayaka, who is a consultant in restorative dentistry, presently working at the military hospital uh, in Colombo, Sri Lanka. He attained his uh, uh, Bachelor in Dental Surgery from University of Peradeniya, and he got his uh, uh, Doctor of Medicine uh, uh, for uh, restorative dentistry from University of Colombo. He underwent uh, further uh, training uh, in Australia, uh, in uh, the Gold Coast. Uh, and then uh, uh, after completing two years uh, uh, there, he uh, joined the military hospital in Colombo. So he will be talking, uh, uh, or rather he will be taking us through all the various forms of indirect restorations, their indications, and as well as uh, various practical problems that you might be uh, encountering along the way as well. I'm sure this is going to be a very well valuable lecture for all of you practitioners. And uh, before I um, give the podium, or I invite uh, Dr. Chanaka in, I would like to remind you that uh, you will not be uh, allowed to ask questions directly. All your uh, microphones have been muted. So if you have questions, uh, would you please uh, type the questions in so that uh, we can avoid repetitions and we can avoid uh, uh, distractions to the lecturer. We will be uh, forwarding them to the uh, speaker at the end of the presentation. And if you have any concerns or if any anything, you can just type it in. And uh, from the technical side also, we'll be looking into that. So uh, without... Uh, any further uh, taking up of time of the, the speaker, I would like to invite Dr. Chanaka uh, to give the webinar on his indirect restorations. Over to you, Chanaka. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sirimon, uh, for introducing me. Actually, I was very uh, glad to uh, accept the invitation of uh, Sri Lanka Dental Association to deliver uh, this presentation today as the first uh, presentation in 2021. Actually, I'm looking forward to uh, speaking about uh, current trends and uh, clinical uh, application of uh, indirect restoration with uh, particularly with respect to Unless and unless, which we generally uh, do not practice in our country, but could be considered as a successful and uh, less aggressive treatment modality in prosthodontics compared to uh, full crowns. Uh, this is the content of my uh, lecture. Uh, in this presentation, I will start off uh, defining uh, what badly broken down uh, or mutilated teeth are and explain how the assessment of a mutilated tooth is done. Next, uh, my discussion will include uh, the classification of uh, indirect restorations, uh, followed by the advantages and uh, disadvantages. Then I will define what inlays and onlays are and explain briefly about the indications. Next, we will uh, get to know the preparation, ideal preparation of uh, inlays and onlays. Finally, I will uh, give you an idea of typical uh, mistakes, uh, rather the failures, and how to avoid uh, these uh, failures. And uh, there are uh, different uh, definitions about uh, badly broken down teeth. However, it can be simply defined uh, as teeth uh, that are injured uh, by destruction or removal of uh, a conspicuous part of tooth structure. In other words, a tooth which has lost a major part of uh, its structure can also be considered as a badly broken down tooth. Uh, among many causes, following are the uh, predominant uh, causes for badly broken down tooth. Caries uh, may develop into extensive cavities if not uh, attended in uh, early stages. Recurrent caries, particularly uh, underneath the restorations, may go undetected and can end up as badly broken down uh, tooth. 
Traumatic injuries, uh, of course, can damage root structure badly. Large excess cavities following uh, root canal treatment of carriers or traumatic tooth can end up uh, with a lot of tooth substance loss. Teeth with uh, developmental defects, such as amelogenesis imperfecta, dentinogenesis uh, imperfecta, etc., also present with considerable amount of uh, tooth substance loss. And uh, cracked teeth, particularly with possible fractures, may also present as badly broken down teeth in a daily dental practice. Uh, there are various factors that uh, should be assessed prior to treatment planning. First and foremost, you should check for what? Uh, check for the vitality of the tooth and take all the measures to preserve the vitality. And next, uh, you should look for amount of tooth substance less left. Uh, if it is severe loss, indirect restoration uh, will be the treatment of choice. If the loss is minimal, then you can manage it with a simple restoration. Checking for existing restoration, also important. Here we check if the restoration is adequate or defective. If uh, periodontal health is not satisfactory, first uh, you need to stabilize the periodontal health before starting any treatment as we need good foundation uh, for advanced dental treatments. Care risk, uh, risk uh, should also be checked. If patient is of high care risk, risk you should attend that uh, issue first uh, than uh, doing anything else. And aesthetic uh, concern is also an important factor to be uh, considered. As you know, uh, today in our days, patients are more into aesthetic uh, concerns. So you should uh, uh, assess if you can uh, meet the patient's expectations uh, with your uh, treatment. Role of the tooth. If the, uh, if the tooth has a major role to play, uh, for example, if uh, the tooth is going to be an abutment in your treatment plan. Radiographic interpretation is also uh, important here to assess uh, uh, the status of the tooth and its supporting structures. Uh, once uh, you uh, do a thorough clinical examination, along with additional uh, investigation, you have to decide whether you go for a direct uh, restoration or indirect restoration. As today's topic is uh, indirect restoration, I will be more focusing on uh, onless and inless as we do not practice these treatment options frequently in our dental uh, setup like uh, we do crowns and bridges. Indirect uh, restorations are fabricated outside the mouth at the chair side or in a laboratory with the help of dental technician. During this process, uh, the tooth preparation is uh, required in such a way in order to retain, see and retain on the, uh, uh, on the tooth frame. And you can uh, obtain an additional uh, retention by uh, adhesive resin cements. Classification. Indirect uh, restorations can be uh, classified either by the material used to fabricate the crown or uh, by the shape of the uh, indirect restoration. So uh, if you go by the material, it can be uh, further categorized into uh, full metal crowns, porcelain fused to metal, and uh, full ceramic crowns. If you go by the shape, it can be uh, further categorized into uh, two major categories. Those are full crowns and partial crowns. So onless, inless, and veneers are described under partial crown category. Uh, before uh, we uh, move into further details, I would like to discuss uh, some of the research data that is available in relation to inless and nonless to complete uh, this presentation. A systematic uh, review published in the uh, Journal of Oral Rehabilitation recently has shown onless have similar uh, or even better uh, survival rate to full crowns. The same study showed that even after 10 years, survival rate of onlay has remained around 92%, whereas inlay 
has uh, remained around 97%. Therefore, uh, providing only less for patients will not make any difference in terms of uh, survival and success rates while preserving more tooth substance. Uh, let, uh, let's look at what inlays are. Inlays uh, cover the central part of the tooth and position uh, within dental heart tissues. They do not uh, cover the cusp. If the width is more, you should plan for an uh, onlay rather than an inlay, since there's a greater chance uh, that uh, the restoration may force the cusp apart under uh, masticatory forces that increases the risk of uh, fracture of the tooth in the future. Uh, when it comes to only, it's an indirect uh, restoration that covers one or more cusp extending uh, beyond the cusp tip to the buccal, lingual, and uh, proximal slopes of the covered cusp. These are fabricated from any of the material used for inlay restoration. Uh, it is imperative that the occlusion in all functional positions is supported by restorative material rather than the tooth structure. Therefore, tooth restoration uh, interface should be at least 1.5 millimeters away from the occlusal contact. That is why you have to assess occlusal contact, contacts before embarking on the tooth preparations. Uh, indications. Uh, now, uh, aesthetics, uh, those uh, patients who uh, need aesthetics. So we can achieve predictable uh, aesthetics outcome with inlays and onlays than direct fillings. When large uh, defects or restorations present, especially those that are uh, wide uh, bacolingually, or require cuspal uh, coverage. And uh, it is also indicated uh, to reinforce a tooth that is to damage uh, to support a filling, but not uh, sufficiently to warrant a crown. And also we can uh, use them to modify uh, occlusal anatomy, particularly for posterior teeth with tooth wear. Having discussed uh, the indications, let me talk about the contraindications also. Uh, they are hardly recommended for patients with high caries risk unless you improve uh, their oral hygiene. And they are not indicated uh, uh, with heavy occlusal forces, particularly patients with para, uh, parafunctional habits and pre premature contacts. They can make, uh, the, uh, make a dislodgement of the indirect restoration under deflective forces where the bossing tooth meets uh, restorative uh, tooth interface. And in cases with minimal loss of tooth structure, where you can manage it with, uh, with simple restoration. And in deep uh, subgingival preparations, where bonding to enamel uh, margin is greatly impaired. Uh, this will happen, especially when you try to uh, do your proximal uh, box preparation. I will discuss uh, the uh, importance of incorporation of uh, proximal boxes uh, to your preparation uh, later in this presentation. Uh, objectives. Uh, you should try to preserve natural tooth substance as uh, much as possible. And uh, your walls of the preparation uh, should always diverge occlusally. Otherwise, uh, you can't uh, insert your indirect respirations. And it is imperative to, ha uh, to have uh, gingival finish lines, supragingival finish lines all the time. And like I said before, it should not subject to high occlusal forces. Uh, restoration to the interface has to be away from occlusal contacts. Having a single path of uh, insertion is also important to have improved uh, retention and resistance of the restoration. Uh, when it comes to material used to fabricate uh, indirect restorations, there are uh, mainly four types. They can be categorized 
into two major uh, groups, metallic and uh, non-metallic, or rather the uh, two-colored uh, respirative material. Cast gold and base metal fall into a metallic category, whereas resins and ceramics fall into non-metallic or, uh, or uh, two-colored material. We'll be discussing each of them briefly in my next slides. Just to cover uh, today's topic, I will go, uh, I will briefly go through uh, different types of gold alloys. These are the uh, types of uh, gold that can be used for dental restorations. Gold type one and two uh, are mainly used for inlays and non-lays. Uh, type three and four can be used for other purposes. Cast uh, gold is strong, therefore it requires a minimal reduction of uh, tooth structure. They show high wear resistance and they have long survival time. And uh, they cause less wear for forcing natural tooth structure. Talking about uh, the composition, cast gold has more than 60% of gold in addition to uh, platinum, palladium and uh, silver. It is always good to have more gold content because higher the gold content, greater the corrosion resistance. Base metal uh, or non-noble uh, material, they are, more, they are considered more economical alternative to cast gold alloys. Generally, they are composed of uh, nickel, chromium, and cobalt. It has high stiffness than gold, making it uh, difficult to do adjustments. Now, uh, why tooth colored indirect uh, restorations are important? I uh, hope you have already identified this figure, well known uh, person. This is uh, his uh, aesthetic appearance to which he had been transformed uh, from with metallic uh, anesthetic restorations. In fact, uh, they are uh, gold crowns. That shows patients are more uh, into aesthetic restorations creating less demand for anesthetic metallic restorations at present. Because of that, uh, resins and uh, ceramics are increasingly popular among patients now. Therefore, I will uh, talk more about tooth colored inlays and non-lays and their uh, preparations. But before that, I would like to introduce some of the pros and cons of tooth colored indirect restorations. These are the advantage of uh, indirect tooth colored restorations. Uh, they have better uh, wear resistance, reduce polymerization shrinkage compared to uh, direct fillings, and uh, they, uh, they reinforce the remaining tooth structure and can have uh, ideal proximal contacts, marginal integrity, and uh, uh, an excellent morphology with them. They are biocompatible and they exhibit a good tissue response due to lack of uh, pulpal irritation and decrease uh, dentine hypersensitivity. Out of all, most uh, important has been its uh, ability to provide the long-term aesthetics. There's a few uh, disadvantages as well. Uh, they are expensive and time consuming. So both, uh, it is, they are both uh, operator and technique sensitive. Uh, they cause way of uh, opposing uh, dentition and restoration, restoration from the opposing arch. And uh, repairs difficult uh, with them and durability is questionable. So uh, repair is not a good, good long-term uh, solution. And uh, they are difficult to try and you need high uh, skills required to hold and seat them on the tooth preps. And fine adjustments possible only after the cementation. Resin uh, composites. Now, as I mentioned earlier, resin composites uh, are one of the tooth colored uh, indirect restorative uh, material. They exhibit, uh, they don't exhibit any biological uh, uh, reactions. Together uh, with uh, suitable bonding agents, they provide an uh, indirect restoration, which uh, is uh, durable. Uh, which, and which has excellent aesthetics that looks uh, like natural teeth. They are not indicated for patients with uh, parafunctional habits 
and those who have uh, unglazed porcelain on the opposing teeth. Composite resin uh, indirect uh, restorations can be fabricated either at the chair site or in the laboratory using conventional and CAD CAM techniques. Now, uh, this is uh, one good example uh, for chair side indirect uh, composites uh, from grandiose inlay system. This is an innovative and specialized technique. This technique uh, is simple and uh, efficient and uh, cheap. And there's no lab uh, work involvement here. And you can create good uh, approximate contacts without having to use uh, time consuming matrix techniques. And you can always uh, achieve perfect occlusal anatomy uh, with them. And this is how it is being done. First, uh, you need to uh, take alginate impression uh, following two steps, then uh, make uh, impression of, the, uh, of, of your preparation. And this is how it is, uh, your tooth preparation is recorded in alginate impression. Uh, now, uh, with the system, they provide you a disilicon. Again, it's a polyvinyl uh, siloxane. So you pour it uh, to the to preparation and leave it until it's set. And then uh, take it out. And you can see uh, the disilicon has uh, given you an re exact replica of your tooth preparation. And uh, on top of that, and then take, uh, take it out of the uh, impression and uh, you can uh, build up your composite indirect uh, restoration on top of the disilicone. Make sure you do uh, incremental wise uh, composite build up. Uh, light cure then, uh, light cure each increment. And here you, uh, the since uh, your uh, disilicone is a bit flexible, you can flex it and uh, uh, sculpt your interproximal contacts very well. And once uh, it is done, take it off and do final polishing, uh, make it smooth. And with the system, again, they provide you a conventional, uh, I mean, a self uh, adhesive, uh, uh, self fetching uh, bonding agent and dual cure resin cement. So use them to bond it uh, uh, to the tooth preparation. Remove excess uh, cement. Uh, do uh, interprox like uh, uh, remove uh, interproximal uh, excess, cure it, and do your final uh, occlusal adjustments with this. And uh, with the advances in uh, digital uh, dentistry workflow, there's a dramatic uh, increase in the use of CAD CAM uh, in modern dentistry. First, composite uh, blocks to use for fabrication of indirect restorations. A uh, using CAD CAM system was paradigm. It came from 3M and later it was replaced by Lava Ultimate again uh, from 3M product. And now we have uh, now uh, Enamic from Vita is uh, getting popular uh, since it has uh, more like uh, uh, superior mechanical uh, properties than uh, Lava Ultimate due to incorporation of high pillar company. Ceramic uh, is the most popular uh, indirect restorative material uh, in dental practice owing to aesthetics and uh, its mechanical properties. Not only that, uh, they are biocompatible and uh, last longer. As for the composition, uh, ceramics are described in three uh, groups. They are felspathic, uh, particle filled and polycrystalline. Felspathic uh, porcelain are only used for fabrication of veneers as they do not uh, have filler content in it. So uh, they are not uh, strong for posterior restorations. Particle filled uh, glass ceramics and polycrystalline ceramics are widely used to fabricate uh, posterior indirect restorations today. IBS Empress, IPS ProCAD, and Vita Blocks Mark II are coming under the particle filled glass ceramics. When you look at this table, you will see uh, a range of commercially available uh, different brands of particle uh, field glass ceramic. As I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, you can see IPS Empress, IPS Procad, et cetera, on some of the examples that can uh, be used to fabricate on less and uh, in less. 
Then you have uh, fully polycrystalline uh, ceramics, which do not have uh, glass or filler content. Matrix is purely composed of uh, crystalline uh, material in the form of uh, either alumina or zirconia. Procera oil serum uh, is composed of alumina, whereas other products like uh, Procera oil, oil, oil zircon, zircon lava, IBS Emax uh, CAD uh, uh, composed of uh, zirconia. Zirconia has the greatest spectral uh, strength and is the most strong. I mean, strongest of all ceramic material. Again, uh, when you look at this table, uh, this table uh, shows you the ceramics composed of alumina and zirconia separately. You can see uh, a range of commercially uh, available brands uh, with uh, alumina or zirconia. So according to your choice, you can go for whatever you like. This case uh, shows you a transformation of amalgam uh, restorations to ceramic uh, inlays and uh, onlays, giving maximum aesthetics. When you look at the second picture after the treatment, you can see it is very difficult to distinguish between uh, the indirect respiration and the natural tool substance. So uh, you can achieve predictable and excellent aesthetics with them. Before, before you uh, learn how to uh, do ideal preparation for ceramic inlay, you should know uh, about the principles. Now, uh, let's get to know the principles of uh, uh, two preps for ceramic uh, inlay first. So you should always uh, observe uh, opposing contacts to avoid margins in the contact uh, area. The depth of the preparation, central preparation, uh, that is also called fissure preparation or the fusel box uh, should have a depth of 1.5 millimeter. And uh, all margins should be supragingival and uh, all margins must be a butt joint or a shoulder, uh, a shoulder preparation. And you can't have any flared or feather edge margins. If you have them, what will happen is uh, later, these margins will break off and uh, there will be uh, gaps developing in between the respiration and the tooth, creating, uh, giving rise to secondary caries. And uh, walls of the preparation box uh, should be flared slightly, then only you can insert your uh, indirect restorations. If you have uh, undercuts, you can't uh, insert your indirect restoration. And uh, this is uh, known as the cable surface angle, uh, as I am pointing out with my cursor. It has to be less than 90 degree or ideal angle uh, should be 60 degree to 80 degree. If you have like a uh, greater angle than this, you will end up with undercuts. And if you have a less angle of that, uh, less angle, then uh, you will have wide open uh, proximal and occlusal boxes where you can't achieve uh, the expected uh, retention and resistance form for the indirect uh, restoration. And all line angles where two surfaces come and meet should be rounded off uh, at last. And uh, what are the words that uh, we should be using uh, to prepare uh, your uh, uh, inlay or onlay? You only uh, need two uh, uh, bursts to do this. Flat-ended uh, diamond with round edges will do the majority of the work. Uh, it is form of a cylinder actually. Here I have shown a red banded one, but according to your dexterity, you can uh, uh, select either red band or a blue band. Then uh, line, uh, line angles can be rounded off using uh, purple banded fine football burr. And this is how you should do your preparation. First, uh, and I'm talking about the ideal preparation, but you can uh, have your own preparation uh, by adhering to uh, the principles that we uh, learned a uh, short while ago. Uh, that means like if you have caries, you have to take always a uh, caries given approach. First remove caries and then uh, look at the tooth and design uh, your uh, preparation according to the situation. Now here we, we do the uh, central preparation first that is also called uh, occlusal box preparation. Here you need a two millimeter uh, width and 1.5 millimeter depth 
for your proxy, uh, occlusal box. And then you have to open up uh, the proximal contacts. And then uh, you need to uh, prepare your proximal boxes. So here, the distance between the wall of adjacent tooth uh, and the axial wall here in the proximal box, the, the, that distance should be at least 1.5 millimeter. And, uh, and depth should be from the floor of the occlusal box to the floor of the proximal bo box should be again uh, uh, 1.5 millimeter. And you should have uh, three millimeters total uh, depth from the floor of the proximal box to occlusal uh, plane. And this is the front view of it. And you can see uh, the gap between the gingival level and the floor of uh, uh, the proximal box. At least you have to uh, keep two millimeters there. And you can see the gap between the floor of the occlusal box and the floor of the proximal box. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be 1.5 millimeter, and the total height should be three millimeters from occlusal plane uh, to the proximal blocks. And uh, you will see the walls are diving, so you can uh, insert your uh, restorations without uh, any uh, problem. And see the uh, cable surface angle here, it is less than uh, 90 degrees, maybe 60 to 80 degrees. So this is an ideal preparation for ceramic inlay. And when it comes to ceramic only, uh, they function best for broken down teeth with uh, buccolingual cast intact. And for endodontically uh, treated uh, posterior teeth with uh, sound uh, buccolingual tooth structures. And also when half or more of the buccolingual dimen dimension of the crown is involved. And you should uh, always uh, keep in your mind that uh, unless embrace uh, cusp and hold them tight to reduce the chance of uh, tooth fracture and uh, retention and uh, resistance form less than crowns as they don't go up to full uh, uh, height of the tooth crown. And since uh, they might not resist uh, additional forces placed on the button, they cannot be used as retainers uh, for uh, fixed partial dentures. And you should know uh, the principles of uh, tooth preparation for ceramic uh, only as well uh, before you learn how to do the preparation for ceramic only. And uh, this is indicated when the preparation of uh, occlusal uh, box extends as close as uh, to the cusp tip than 0.5 millimeter, or when the uh, enamel is uh, severely undermined. And margins always, as I always uh, tell you, margins uh, should be above the gingival level, uh, like in English. And, uh, and you should not incorporate a uh, groove to get extra resistance form because resistance can be uh, obtained through proximal boxes. So you don't have to unnecessarily uh, damage the tooth structure by adding grooves into it. And uh, resistance and retention, uh, mainly re retention is primarily provided uh, uh, by addition to uh, addition to animal and dentin using adhesive cements. Uh, again, this is how it should be done. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can uh, have your own uh, designs according to the situation. Uh, first, uh, here you should uh, uh, reduce, uh, um, occlusal reduction should be done. Uh, first, you should uh, reduce uh, functional cost by two millimeters, then non-functional cast by 1.5 millimeters. Then again, you have to uh, uh, prepare the uh, occlusal box with two millimeters, it should be two millimeter in width and 1.5 millimeter in depth. And uh, you have to, uh, like in English, you have to open proximal contacts um, and uh, prepare proximal box boxes. Again, the distance between the wall of adjacent tooth and the axial wall of the proximal box should be 1.5 millimeter and depth uh, of the proximal box, uh, the total depth of the proximal box, as I mentioned before, should be three millimeters. And you can clearly see uh, here, uh, there's a gap between uh, uh, the tooth uh, preparation on the uh, adjacent tooth. It is because we have gone uh, past the proximal uh, contact that is better because now only uh, your technician can 
sculpt uh, sculpt uh, your indirect restoration with, with good proximal contacts and uh, 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 and uh, shape and contour with a good contour. Uh, then you should uh, prepare the shoulder margins, both uh, buccal and lingual aspects. It has to be one millimeter in depth again. And here uh, you should learn uh, some principle behind it. Uh, on the functional uh, cast, you can't uh, go closer uh, more than two millimeters to the gingival level. You, you have to at least keep that uh, distance two millimeters from your uh, finish margin and the gingival level. On the non-functional uh, cusp, uh, you can't go past uh, the anatomic equator for the most bulbous part of the uh, non-functional cusp. If you go, uh, if you go uh, past these lines, then uh, automatically your preparation will convert into a uh, three-quarter crown or a full crown unnecessarily. And once the preparation is done uh, and the impression is made, you have, you have to temporize your preparation uh, until uh, the provision of the permanent one. Uh, to provide the uh, occlusion and positional stability. Temporization can be uh, done either direct or uh, using indirect or indirect methods. Uh, if you uh, select direct methods, what you can do is uh, without uh, etching the tooth prep, you can etch in no bonding, but you can uh, apply uh, desensitizing agents in order to uh, prevent uh, hyper uh, dentine hypersensitivity if the tooth is vital. And on top of the preparation, you can uh, add composite and sculpt uh, for uh, form your indirect restoration, incremental wise, and cure it. Then uh, remove the entire indirect restoration, finish it, uh, make it smooth, uh, remove all the uh, rough edges, and then you can cement it back uh, on the tooth prep uh, using uh, provisional cement. And if you select indirect uh, methods, you can do it at the chair side or in the laboratory. If you do it in the chair side, uh, you have to be prepared with a putty mold and uh, you can use that putty mold to make uh, a fabrication of the um, uh, direct restoration. So what you have to do is you just pack your uh, mold with the temporary um, rest uh, direct restoration material available and uh, place it back on the tool prep, leave it uh, until it's set and then remove it and do all the uh, finishing part, and uh, you can cement it back on the tooth prep with provisional cementation. You can uh, uh, send the preparation to lab also, but this will take uh, longer than chairs. And you should know some uh, 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 other materials that are being used to fabricate uh, temporary uh, uh, restorations. Now, uh, and there are uh, four main types starting from uh, metacrylates, this acryl, uh, this DNA, and the European dimethacrylate. Each one of them uh, has unique physical properties exhibiting plus and minuses of the product. I would like to uh, briefly talk about their features one by one. Metacrylate are in the form of uh, methyl, ethyl, or uh, vinyl. It has high polymerization shrinkage less aesthetics and produce heat. Monomer in metacrylate and uh, heat uh, produced during setting can cause damage to the part. On the other hand, uh, this cycles with better aesthetics and has uh, less polymerization shrinkage. They generate uh, less heat, but produce thick oxygen uh, inhibition layer. Now, uh, this DMA has uh, the advantage of uh, fracture resistance associated with metacrylate and uh, improved aesthetics associated with uh, this acryl. And uh, when you consider urethane dimethacrylate, uh, it has high strength, but it is not that aesthetic. Therefore, a popular one to use in this practice is uh, this DMA-based products, but they are relatively expensive than other products. Uh, then uh, provisional cementation of temporary uh, indirect restorations. Use, you have to use always uh, eugenol free cement uh, if uh, the final cement is going to be a resin cement. The more retentive uh, sink 
polycarboxylate cement uh, is the temporary looting cement of choice here. And uh, as I said before, uh, desensitizing agents can be applied here to reduce force operative hypersensitivity in the tooth is vital. Glutaraldehyde based uh, ones, uh, uh, for example, Gluma, do not affect cementation of uh, temporary so fineness. Right, uh, when, uh, uh, when you talk about permanent cementation of your onlays and inlays, you can use adhesive with uh, resin cements, and they are, they are popular than uh, conventional uh, cements now. In conventional uh, resin cements, uh, you have to do etching, uh, priming of the tooth surface. That is a must before cementation. And uh, pre treatment uh, pre of intaglio surface or should be done uh, on, I mean, uh, intaglio surface of the restoration should be done either by uh, acid etching, uh, sandblasting with uh, air abrasion using alumina, or you can uh, use silent coupling agents. And after that, you can apply uh, resin cements to uh, fix your cement uh, crowns or fix your uh, inlay or inlay to uh, restorations to the two traps. Now, uh, as I said before, these are uh, some of the examples of conventional resin cements. Uh, we have uh, Duolink for Universal and we have Panavia. There are a series of Panavia products uh, starting from Panavia X and uh, fifth generation of Panavia. That is Panavia V5. Uh, with these products, actually, you have to, uh, these, these techniques are actually uh, technique sensitive. Uh, like I said, uh, you have to etch prime and uh, uh, prime the tooth preparations before you uh, coat with uh, resin cements. And when you talk about self adhesive resin cements, uh, you do not have to follow uh, those specific uh, steps as you do uh, with the conventional resin cements. These cements are easy to use and give a predictable cementation. Uh, these are some of the uh, products that are available in our country now. Uh, ReliX, Unisem uh, from 3M, and we have uh, Gsem from uh, GC. Then you have uh, Maxim Light uh, from Kerr. You have Monosem. Uh, from Shofu, Panavia Cement Universal and Panavia Cement uh, Plus, which release fluoride from uh, Curare. And we have the same which release calcium and fluoride uh, from Disco products. Now uh, we are uh, in the uh, in, uh, final couple of like final uh, uh, slides. Uh, uh, when talking about failures, failures could be either biological or technical. Biological uh, complications include hypersensitivity, caries, uh, endodontic complications, and uh, tooth and root fractures. Technical failures include uh, ceramic uh, fractures, uh, which is the most common technical complication, uh, followed by debonding and chipping of the uh, uh, ceramic uh, restorations. So these uh, failures mainly could be due to inadequate uh, tooth preps or bad uh, fabrication of uh, restoration. If restoration has uh, not seated well on the prep or had gaps after cementation, recurrent caries and marginal staining can be developed over the time. And uh, you can expect uh, bulk fractures and marginal breakdown uh, if you haven't done uh, adequate tooth uh, preps where the space for indirect restoration is not adequate. So in, uh, to avoid these failures, you should always adhere to principles and uh, guidelines when you do the tooth trips. Everything is like explained uh, before. And precise impression making and good uh, laboratory support is also uh, required to prevent or mitigate these failures. Now, uh, in a summary, uh, inlays and onlays uh, are considered as this uh, treatment alternative for uh, crowns. And uh, for a successful restoration, adequate uh, tooth reduction is a must and uh, excellent cementation uh, uh, technique is crucial. Therefore, whenever possible, your first option uh, would be uh, an only rather than a crown as far as preservation of uh, tooth structure is concerned. 
This will minimize uh, the problems and uh, consequences that you encounter following the treatment. Uh, before ending up, uh, I would like to encourage our dental surgeons to practice uh, these more conservative uh, dental treatment modalities uh, like what I have been uh, talking so far. I hope uh, you learned something out of this presentation or at least uh, you refresh your knowledge uh, in this subject. Thank you very much everyone uh, for listening to me and uh, thank you uh, Sri Lanka Dental Association uh, for the opportunity uh, given for me to share my knowledge and thoughts with my fellow dental surgeons. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shanaka, for an excellent uh, presentation. Uh, not only excellent presentation, I would rather say it's the most updated presentation as well. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, there are some uh, few questions uh, which have come in. Uh, Shall we take the questions? Uh, yes, of course, we go ahead with the uh, question. Uh, yes. Uh, well, the first question is, uh, 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 they have asked uh, what is meant by an overlay and uh, what are your recommendations for endocrowns as an indirect restoration for endodontically treated molars? Uh, right, uh, overlay. Overlay is when uh, now only an overlay, they are like, uh, you know, uh, we uh, use, uh, we can't distinguish them uh, very well. Uh, we use uh, the term uh, only for everything, but uh, actually uh, overlay is an uh, indirect restoration which covers all the cusp. Like uh, it covers the entire occlusal, uh, uh, occlusal uh, surface. And only is one that uh, covers one or more cusp. So that is the difference between uh, both two. But nowadays we use only uh, to define uh, everything that we uh, do uh, uh, in the practice. Uh, the other uh, question is: uh, uh, Is the recommendations? Uh, yeah, recommendations for endocrowns. Endocrowns, uh, yes, again, uh, endocrowns can be done uh, using zirconia because endocrowns are subject to a uh, lot of uh, masticatory forces. So with, to withstand uh, those forces, I would uh, recommend uh, zirconia um, made uh, some you know, restorations uh, fabricated uh, using zirconia uh, material. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, there's another question uh, which has come in. Um, uh, that is, how can we adjust and repair zirconia crowns after cementation in dental practice? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, uh, best thing is uh, uh, to do a crucial adjustment before you uh, do the cementation because it's very difficult to adjust uh, zirconia restorations after the cementation. So if there, if there are gross uh, crucial uh, adjustments are to be done, uh, best thing is to do uh, is remaking the crown. If uh, you find that you can uh, uh, adjust it uh, with, uh, with uh, trimming and uh, grinding, then uh, you can do the grinding of zirconia crown and make sure you uh, replace it uh, by uh, sending it uh, to the dental lab before you uh, fix it uh, on, uh, on the uh, tooth preparation. Otherwise, uh, Exposed zirconia can cause a lot of failure on the opposing uh, teeth and uh, they can uh, develop cracks which can uh, propagate into uh, the core of the zirconia crown uh, uh, leading to uh, ceramic fractures later on. And if you have, uh, by any chance, if you have uh, cemented uh, them uh, on the crown and you see gross occlusal adjustment are to be done. Again, uh, there's no choice. You have to cut it out and uh, remake a new one. And if you find that uh, you have, you can do uh, fine adjustments and make it up to the crucial scheme, then uh, then what you can do is you can check the opposing uh, tooth. If it has uh, enough thickness of uh, enamel, you can uh, grind it and uh, uh, get the crucial back to normal. Otherwise, if, if it is also not possible, what you can do is you can uh, trim the zirconia crown uh, or the restoration and grind it, but make sure you do a good uh, polishing uh, before you send the patient off. 
that is how we should uh, manage that case. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chanaka. Uh, can I just squeeze in uh, one more question? Yes, please. Um, uh, well, uh, uh, the question is, what is the best cement for cementing metal or gold crowns? Metal or gold crowns. Uh, so you, since it's a metal crown, you can use uh, resin modified the glass and you know, looting cement for that. Uh, that is the best one. Uh, I mean, uh, you can always use self-adhesive resin cements, but uh, uh, but uh, you can use uh, conventional uh, cements like uh, resin modified glass uh, uh, glass animal cements like Fuji Plus after applying Fuji Plus condition on the tooth prep. Otherwise, you can uh, you can use uh, you can use whatever you want, but uh, I can't say this one is better than the other. Uh, the thing is, uh, you can use resin modified glass animal cements, which are much cheaper than the other self adhesive resin cements. Hope okay, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Chanaka Disanayaka, for an excellent presentation. Um, uh, let me, on behalf of uh, the Sri Lanka Dental Association and the Commonwealth Dental Association, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you for taking time off from your busy schedule uh, to give us uh, some uh, very valuable insights and uh, this update on indirect restorations. And uh, I hope that you will join us uh, in future uh, webinars as well. Uh, thank you so much.